Hello, it is Casey Parrott. I have never made a video of myself before, so I ask you to please bear with me as I do this. Uh, we were asked this week in class, what is spiritual formation? And I love that question um, because it's not really talked about a great deal, especially in ministry. Um, so Christian spiritual formation is this process that we as Christians are ongoing and doing, and it's to help us to be conformed to the image of Christ, uh, which is for the glory of God and for the sake of others. And so that would be my definition of what is spiritual formation. Uh, we can look at, uh, I, I made some notes, uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. And I like it um, to help explain this process. It says, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom but we all with unveiled faces looking as in a mirror at the glory of the lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as from the lord the spirit it is a wonderful passage because the freedom that it's explaining is from sin and our futile attempts you know um to keep the demands of the law um and as a way of um, earning righteousness. Um, and unveiled in this um, particular passage means that nothing is standing in our way or obstructing our view or our vision of Christ uh, as we see him revealed in scripture. So being transformed as believers is this continual process into becoming more Christ-like, which is the ultimate goal um, that we have as Christians. And we find that in Romans 8, 12, um, Philippians uh, 3, 12 and 14, uh, 1 John 3, 2. Um, and so this formation is done first and foremost by God and through his grace and through the Holy Spirit who he said he would send as a helper. And it's an active process. And so I, I really liked reading uh, Willard's article about this. Um, as I hold a psychology degree myself, uh, I noticed one of the things that we do in humanity um, <clears throat> is we blame shift. We constantly blame others <clears throat> or God for our problems. And it's easier for us somehow to justify ourselves and our own culpability when we do that. And we see that as, as soon as man hits the scene in Genesis 3, God comes to Abraham, uh, Adam and asks, uh, what happened? And he's like, hey, it's the woman you sent me. And then he asks Eve and she's like, hey, it's the serpent. So immediately we knew to blame someone else. <clears throat> so as I was reading this article this week and it was talking about this active um, method that we use to uh, work on our spiritual formation because it's not just God alone. Um, it is something that we need to put in part of ourselves into. We see that uh, Willard mentions the disciplines for the spirit of life and those are actually numerous. We, we can't narrow it down to just one or two. I mean there's many. There's solitude and silence, prayer, journaling, study and meditation, fasting, chastity, secrecy, confession, fellowship, uh, submission uh, and guidance, simplicity, uh, stewardship and sacrifice, kind of grouped together there, worship and celebration, witnessing, servicing, so there's a, there's a lot of ways and a lot of disciplines in life that we can use. And those are used to help shape um, our inner self so that our outward self starts correlating and moving towards that Christ likeness. But it is our inner self that God is looking at. And it really helps us, these disciplines, while not required by the Bible, not required, um, do allow us to not blame shift and, and to take on the responsibility of being an active participant in our spiritual formation. 
uh, which Christ is looking for. He's looking for us to actively seek him and to be with him. So that is what spiritual formation is, kind of how it's done, but it's ultimately the work of the Holy Spirit and our participation with him only makes it go a little faster.